Hey guys, let me know if you agree that Walmart is to blame for food shortages, hunger in households, and antagonizing the very big, big problem of food insecurity with millions of families struggling to afford food today and high prices and inflation making it even harder to do. And to make matters worse, we all remember the days of empty shelves and food shortages on a regular, right? Those days would make even the strongest man weep and mothers would go home and cry because they couldn't afford what little food was left available because the price was just beyond their reach and their family's budget was already stretched to the max back then and about to break down and collapse at any minute. But those days are somewhat behind us and they're all in the past, right? And now today we face yet another looming threat and a dark cloud over our heads each and every time that we walk inside of a Walmart store or attempt to place an order online for curbside pickup or Walmart spark delivery. Yes, that's right. Food being thrown away, thrown in the dumpsters out back in the Walmart dumpsters and hundreds of thousands of dollars of worth of food tossed and discarded tons of food, thousands of pounds of food while families continue to starve and are forced to go without. And I guess humanity isn't profitable enough for companies like Walmart, so they just would rather throw it all away and place another giant, massive PO, another massive purchase order with their food supplier to replenish their shelves and stock back up after the loss. But it's okay because, number one, it's a write-off and it's a business expense. And number two... They'll just increase the prices going forward to absorb the wasted food thrown in the trash and further increase their profit margins at the same time, more than likely. And ultimately, that means less for us and more for them. So listen to this. Per the National Retail Federation, Walmart reigns as the largest big box retailer in the nation, which is why perhaps the company stays in the headlines. Over the years, Walmart has found itself at the center of controversy on more than one occasion, from demands to pay workers higher wages to the company's legal woes. Walmart has been widely criticized. And most recently, the company caught flack for the amount of food waste that it produces after a video went viral on TikTok. And in this viral video on social media, which shows Walmart throwing out tons of food, well, the internet reacts. And some of the comments said, I can't imagine being tasked with throwing out food as someone from an immigrant family. And one person said, sometimes not eating the full amount is okay, but wasting, it's bad. But nevertheless, it's happening and it's only going to get worse. These videos of Walmart stores throwing away countless carts worth of food continue to spark outrage online. And people say that this is so terrible to see and how the video description read crazy walmart throwing away over two hundred thousand dollars worth of food in one night it really is so terrible to see good food go to waste much like the problems happening right now in new york city where the new york times reported the following headline which reads uneaten and trashed how new york wasted five thousand migrant meals in just one day and goes on to explain how New York City is paying tens of thousands of dollars a month for meals that are supposed to go to feed migrants, but instead are never eaten and then thrown away into the trash. But I digress. Meanwhile, for 2024, there are new California laws and large venues are now required to donate leftover food instead of throwing it away. A bill that's being described as a win-win. But it isn't entirely what they want you to believe. They have their motives and hidden agendas as always. And I just want everyone to be aware and not to forget that. We mustn't take their supposed kindness for weakness. And they really, they really do not care about us. But CBS News shared how long, how among the new laws for California is one designed to reduce waste in our landfills, all while feeding more people in need. Senate Bill 1383 first went into effect in 2022, requiring certain businesses such as grocery stores or Walmart superstores to donate unused food to food recovery organizations. 
As of January 1, 2024, the law expanded into include hotels, restaurants with more than 5,000 square feet or more than 250 seats, health facilities with on-site food facilities and more than 100 beds, state agency cafeterias, local education agents, agencies, and large venues and events. And Patty O'Connor, chief operating officer of Feeding San Diego, said, this bill is really a win-win. It's keeping food out of the landfills and it's feeding people at the same time. There's so much food that gets thrown into the landfill. And when it goes into the landfill, listen, it turns into methane gas. It's a super pollutant. That is actually the main reason that this bill was passed, was to keep that food and other organic waste out of the landfill. So there you have it, folks. This isn't actually about feeding the hungry, but more so about pushing more of their climate change agenda. Okay, got it. But based on the article, as it continued on to say that, in fact, the small compost bins that the city of San Diego passed out last year, in fact, came from SB 1383 and added a bit of a disclaimer with, but not all leftover food from large venues can be donated. O'Connor said there are strict guidelines to ensure everything is safe and you can't take it out of the buffet and then donate it because there's just been too many people interacting with it. If there's food that's been hot, it needs to be chilled to a certain temperature and ideally frozen. This is what Connor O'Connor said. Uh, O'Connor admitted implementing the new law takes a lot of work, something feeding San Diego is more than willing to do. For example, they're the ones who coordinate donation pickups. We connect the food donor, the grocery store or the venue with our partner and we have that partner go directly to pick it up and bring it back to the community, according to O'Connor. The model eliminates the need for additional warehouse space since most donations are distributed immediately. And Feeding San Diego already works with the San Diego Zoo as well as the Hotel Del Coronado. O'Connor expects more venues will jump on board soon, saying if they need any assistance doing so, they are here to help. O'Connor said, this is what we do day in and day out. 76% of what the organization distributes is rescued, meaning items that could have been thrown away were instead donated. SB 1383 looks to increase those numbers, yet O'Connor says even with the new donations, they're always in need of more. And as I have said numerous times before, O'Connor, the more is synonymous with income and earnings higher income, increased pay, and multiple income streams, in my opinion, because prices are on the rise and this is only the beginning, folks. Things are about to get a whole lot worse. And this morning, I came across a story that came across my news feed, and it was a, of a young man, a small business owner and entrepreneur, explaining the best AI passive income side hustles for 2024. Now, he had mentioned how this is one of the best and easiest side hustles that you could start this year and from getting ideas, leveraging AI, chat GPT, mid journey. He shared how to cover everything from start to finish. And the shops that he talks about are making $10,000 to $33,000 per month in passive income profit from selling this kind of art. Now, there's a quick start guide, an intro, Process overview, monetization and potential profit module, product research aid, setup and organizational tools, how to make images that sell the best image strategy, how to resize images, all the must do's before listing for sale, the PDF as well, and the blueprint to scaling to six and seven figures. It's truly remarkable, but I'm not going to bore you guys with all the details here about how new opportunities for passive income in 2024 with updated AI tools can make it a very simple and easy process to create and sell AI generated digital art for passive income or how the 14,000 sales and generating close to $10,000, 10 grand monthly in revenue within just four months of getting started and how quickly and easily you can automate the process with less than $10 to get started has worked for them and can work for you too. But if you're interested, then you can reach out to me 
My contact info is in the description down below. And while you're down there, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.